So over the course of the last two years, I've been inundated with DMs and tweets and emails regarding testing or switching entirely over to Capture One and creating a video about my experience. And I've already accomplished one half of that request as I began using Capture One roughly, I don't know, maybe two years ago now. And I'm happy to say that I've now fulfilled on the second half of that request by creating this video about my experience with specific regards to how I use it and how I have it set up to edit my landscape photos. And Capture One was not only kind enough to sponsor this week's video, but also offer everyone a 30-day free trial along with a 20% off discount code for the first 100 folks that use it. So a big many thanks to Capture One for sponsoring this week's video. Now, when it comes to photo editing, there's, there's so many different tools and techniques and, and filters and this and that available to us to where I don't think anybody uses all of them. I know I certainly don't. And I only want to see, I only want to have access to the things that I use on every single photograph. And I want to kind of get rid of all the other things that I deem to be just clutter. I edit my photos that way. I live my life that way. I have my, my office and studio set up that way. If it's not anything that I use, I don't want to see it, just get rid of it. I like things to be very clean and very simple. And this is the way that I have Capture One set up for me. So if I come up here to the adjustment tab, it has all of my basic adjustments right here. You have your, your white balance. So if I click on the little color picker here and select a neutral color, select that, it changes the uh, white balance based off of that neutral color that I selected. You have your exposure section here with contrast, brightness, saturation. You have your high dynamic range section. This is what Capture One considers highlight shadows, uh, uh, black point and your white point. All of that is contained there. I can select this right here and I have my curves. I can close that down. I also have dehaze, clarity. If I wanted to pump up a little bit of clarity in there, I could. If I wanted to add a subtle vignette to this image, I could as well. And you can close these down. You don't have to have them all open. You can arrange them however you like. I'm gonna put that back though. But I like mine arranged this way because this is the, the workflow that I go through. The very first thing that I do is I always, uh, 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 I always update my white balance and then I go ahead and correct my exposure. And then I kind of work down from there. So this, the way that this is laid out works perfectly for my workflow because I, I customized it for, uh, for my specific taste. It's one of the cool things about Capture One there's a million different ways to customize it. You can add tools in, you can remove tools. If there's a tool that you that you want to see here that you don't, you can just right click, add tool. And as you can see, there is an absolute abundance of things that you can add in here, but I like to keep things clean and simple. Now you might be asking, you know, where's all the color different coloring editing tools, easy for me to say. Come right up here to these three little dots, select that, and this is everything related to color. So you can uh, update individual color channels. So if I wanted to update the yellow channel, I wanted to shift those yellows a little bit more towards orange, you could easily do that. If I wanted to uh, change the reds a little bit more towards orange, you can easily do that right there. You also have your color balance, and this is where you can tint the highlights of your image a certain color. You can tint the midtones, you can tint the, uh, the shadows of your image a certain color. So if I wanted to warm the highlights up a touch, maybe cool the shadows down a little bit, go for that kind of teal and orange vibe. You can easily do that. I can hit the shortcut key Y and you can see the before and after. And anyone who watches this channel for any amount of time knows that I'm a huge fan of a, a really good before and after key. And I think um, Capture One happens to have one of the best there is. So you can come up here to the before and after and hit split view finder. You can actually slide this back and forth. So this is before, and after, it's really cool for just seeing how it impacts a very certain area. So if I wanted to really hone in on that lighthouse, you could easily do that right there. And then when you're done with it, you just hit the shortcut key Y to turn it off. Now, if I want to go for my, my finishing touches, this is where I always, this is the, the last thing I do. I will go ahead and apply sharpening. I look for areas of noise and do some kind of noise reduction and things of that nature. You can come right up here to this section here. You have this focus area here, which kind of helps you apply um, your, your sharpening. So if I just wanted to focus on that lighthouse, I could. And if you wanted to zoom in further, you could do that. I think somewhere about there looks good. And then you can go ahead and apply your sharpening. I'm applying a ton just so you can easily see it in the preview panel. Of course, I would never add that much. You also have your, your noise reduction here. You can add in a film grain, spot removal, all those kind of finishing touches right there. But those three tabs, the adjustment tab, the color editing tab, and the kind of uh, final or finishing touches tab that I call it, 
So those are the things that I apply to just about every photograph and everything that you that I showed are all things that I use on just about every single image. So it's it's very clean, it's very streamlined and, and it works great for my particular workflow. Now, one thing I do want to show you that I absolutely love and I did just came to the top of mind and I want to make sure I don't forget it is this cool little loop feature. It might seem like something kind of silly, but uh, to some, but I think it's absolutely fantastic and it's right here. You just click on this click on anywhere in the scene and you can immediately zoom into that area. So if I wanted to see up here, you could if you want to see that house. You can this little flower and you can move it all over the place. You can even adjust the size of it. So if you go to the loop size, you can make it small if you wanted to. I particularly like it as big as possible and you can even change the loop zoom. I always have it set at 200%, but I just think that's really cool to be able to quickly zoom in to a specific area as opposed to having to hit a shortcut key to zoom in or, you know, do the little trackpad extender thing you got to do on a Mac to, to zoom into a certain area. I just think that's absolutely fantastic for uh, just looking at a very, very quick snapshot zoomed in area of a particular image. Super, super handy. I find a very solid use case for that constantly. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. So sticking with the theme of things that I do on every single photograph and just about every image, I use some type of a filter, whether it's a, a gradient filter or a radial filter. So if I wanted to come up here to uh, the layer section, which Capture One, by the way, has layers, which is always a good thing in my opinion. Now let's say we wanted to actually to keep things interesting. Let's go to a new image. Let's say that I want to make sure that I can see this bridge in the background, but that, that bridge gets kind of lost in this image. So if I wanted to brighten up that center just a little bit, I'm in the layer section, I'm gonna hit the radio filter, and I'm just gonna draw a radio filter right across that kind of center area there. I'm gonna right click and invert this mask because I wanna make sure that I'm targeting the center portion of this. And let's say that I just wanted to brighten it up a little bit just to draw some additional attention, attention to that area. And as you can see, it created an adjustment layer up here. So let's double click it and type in radial just to stay organized. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see that it just brightened up that area a little bit. But if you wanted to take it further, one of the things that I think is really great is that you can apply practically any adjustment to any filter. I haven't come across one adjustment that I could not apply to a gradient filter or a radial fil filter. There might be some out there, but I haven't encountered them yet. So let's say if I wanted to add a little bit of contrast, I could come down here to curves and let's put an anchor point in the center and let's lift the highlights a touch. Let's bring down the shadows a little bit there to about there and maybe brighten it up just a little bit further and we could toggle this on and off before and after, before and after. It's definitely a little bit overdone. I'll bring down those highlights some, but you definitely get the point. And what is even cooler is that you can adjust the opacity of that layer. So whenever I'm applying gradient filters or radio filters, I often will overdo it and then come back and adjust the opacity of that layer. So if I wanna bring the highlights down a little bit, maybe bring those shadows up just a touch in that region, maybe bring the white point. And now I could come up here to the opacity of this radio filter and I can bring it up or down to whatever area I think looks best. And I think that's incredibly handy without having to go in and adjust each one of the individual uh, sliders that encompass that radio filter. I hope that makes sense. It's so much easier just to change the opacity of that overall layer. So I think that's really, really cool. If we wanted to come up here and create a gradient filter because we felt that this foreground was too dark, come up here, just add a gradient right through there. I clicked on the gradient icon here. And what's cool is if you hover, hover, if you hover over any of these, it shows you a description of what that tool is. And a lot of them will have a little tutorials here that you can watch and some additional information to uh, help you understand exactly how to use that tool, what's going on, how best to apply it, which is always a good thing. But if we wanted to, uh, I already drew the gradient here, let's say just bring up the exposure a little bit, maybe uh, come down to the tone curve and lift the highlights up just a little bit there. We we'll bring up the shadows a touch, maybe come down and close this down and come down to clarity. We boost that clarity a little bit and uh, toggle this on and off. Let's first name it gradient. There we go. Toggle that on and off. So that's definitely looks a little bit overdone, but we don't have to go back and adjust the exposure or the clarity or the shadows or anything like that. We can adjust, we can just adjust the overall opacity. 
of that. And I think that that is wildly beneficial and quite a time saver as well. And I think that that looks better right there. So super, super handy. Let's go to another image here. Now, one of the things that I think is, is cool, I've actually very rarely talk about this on this channel, and it has to do with presets. And Capture One calls presets styles. And I've never been a big fan of presets, mainly because it's, it's kind of a one size fits all thing. So, I mean, I've seen many presets before that I love the way it looked on the, the person who's selling the presets single photograph, but then I go to apply it to one of mine and it looks absolutely horrendous. Uh, the, the saturation is too strong, the highlights are too bright or, or whatever the case may be. It's very seldom that a preset looks good on every single photograph in the, in the world. Actually, it's, it never happens, it's impossible. But the way that Capture One looks at these, it's quite a, a time saver and it's right here in this section uh, this is where the styles are. Capture One comes with these, these built-in styles, which is pretty cool. If you hover over any of them, you can see that style applied. You have the legacy styles here, black and white, color effects. I'm just kind of just going through these real quick just to kind of give you a quick idea, but that's not even what is really that cool about it, in my opinion. But if I come up here to landscape, for example, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna apply it to a new layer, come back to the adjustment section and you'll see that the layer is applied right here. I can turn it on and turn it off. And I think it looks pretty good. But what is so neat is that typically that would be it. You know, you applied your preset and you're, you're done. But if there's areas of the photograph where you don't want that, that uh, style applied, you can easily remove it. I'm gonna come up here to the eraser tool and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna turn the flow up quite a bit just so it's a little quicker. And I'm just gonna erase it from the edges of the scene all around here like this. And I only want that style applied to the center of the photograph. And if I turn it on and off, now you can see that that style is only applied to the center of the image. Now, if I wanted to take it even a step further beyond that, let's say I wanted to add a little contrast or boost the saturation, you can make refinements to that style. It's not a one and done kind of a thing. So you can see what has already been applied to create this style. So let's say I wanted to boost the saturation a little further, I could maybe add a little bit of contrast. Maybe I wanted to boost those highlights a little bit, you can. Let's toggle this on and off now, before and after, before and after. And if I'm afraid that I might've gone a little bit too far, I don't have to go back and adjust all those sliders, I can just change the overall opacity to bring it down to a level that I think looks good. So this is where we started and after, before, and after. And if you like a style, so if I love the way this looks, I can create my own style and just save this as a style there. So I think that the way that Capture One implements that is pretty cool, it's very unique, and it gives you the really full autonomy to do anything that you want to those styles. Those styles are really just kind of like a jumping off point or our head start, if you will. But what I think is even way beyond cooler than that is this right here. So let me go to this image here. And it is something that's called a style brush. So this is the style brush section. And you can move these however you want. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to keep mine in an order from top to bottom as I work throughout my editing process. But if I open up style brushes, you have these built-in style brushes. So cool, warm, saturation, enhancement, add detail, uh, soft flare, whiten teeth, contrast, light, all different kinds of things, dodge and burn. So let's say that, let's come over here to burn, darken. Let me close these down here. And let's say I just wanna darken down this area here. Let me right click, increase this flow a touch. And let's just say we're just gonna paint it all right through here. And of course, as you can tell, that is grossly overdone, but we can just come back and just reduce that opacity of that layer and it created that layer right there. So that is really cool. But my favorite aspect of this is that you can build these kind of custom style brushes. And I already have a bunch that I've already created here. Let me delete this right here. So I'm gonna come up here to style brushes again. I'm gonna close down built-in style brush and I'm gonna hit custom style brushes. So I use this right here, detail pop, I'm sorry, detail pop with contrast. I use this style brush on just about every single photograph that has moving water. And I, waterfalls are my favorite subject. So just about all of my photographs do have some type of moving water in it and this brush I use constantly. So I just select that, and I'm gonna go ahead and just start to paint it on this water. Right click again, let's just turn up that flow, just to speed things up a bit. All through here, just like this, and I'm working very quickly to respect everyone's time. 
just like that right there. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see that it created a layer titled Detail Pop with Contrast. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see what that's doing. And that's always, that's definitely overdone. I created that style brush on purpose to be overdone. And then I can just reduce the opacity to a point that I like of that layer. And I don't have to go in and adjust the contrast curve or adjust the highlight reduction or the boost in the white point and all of these different things that went in to creating that style brush. So that is a huge, huge time saver right there. And I, I showed you just a minute ago, I have a burn soft detail, detail pop, detail pop with contrast darken, saturation with clarity. So if I wanted to come up here and select saturation with clarity, right click again, turn that flow up because the human eye basically sees color closer. So things that are a little bit more punchy, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more saturated, and things that seem a little bit more um, detailed, a little bit more sharp, those seem to be areas that are closer to the viewer. The viewer sees those better. And then as you go throughout the scene, if you can make the saturation slowly fall off or make that detail slowly fall off, that'll help create the illusion that the, there's a little bit more depth in the photograph. So this style brush is great because it's going to not only saturate the area that you put it in, but it's also going to add some clarity to it as well. And if I toggle this foreground on and off, it's just going to draw a little bit more attention to that area. And of course I can reduce the opacity. So that style brush is something that I use all the time to help create the illusion of depth in a photograph. So the style brushes are pretty handy as well and you can create them as, as many of them you want, build them all. It's actually kind of fun to, to, to create those. But I think we all have these, these processes that we go through on all of our photographs. So to create these, you know, these, uh, these brushes specific to your liking is definitely a time saver. Now, the final thing that I want to mention, and it's kind of a hot topic to me, but it um, has to do with shortcut keys. And anyone who uses shortcut keys, you know two things. One, they save you a ton of time. Two, they're very difficult to remember because they're always so obscure. So if you wanted to increase the exposure, it'd be like Command Shift Option E or something like something really weird. But if you come up here to edit and come down here to edit shortcut keys, short, edit keyboard shortcuts and select speed edit keys, you can see I've already done it. You can change these to whatever you want. So I made exposure E, I made contrast C, I made brightness B, I made saturation S, and that's the way that I remember things. So highlights are one, shadows are two, whites are three, black point is four. It's very easy for me to remember that. So if I want to update exposure, I can just hit E. You can see I can update the brightness. If I hit, or the exposure, if I hit B, now that's the brightness. If I hit S, that's gonna increase the saturation of the overall photograph. And I think that's really cool to create it however you want for your photograph. So those speed edit keys are tremendous and it's, it's quite a time saver to just create shortcuts that you can remember and it's just easier for you to operate. It's just gonna make your editing process much more enjoyable, much more enjoyable and much quicker as well. So that's a real quick overview of the way that I use Capture One, of the way that I have Capture One set up. I do hope that that was helpful. If you enjoyed the video and I would like to see more videos about Capture One, if you could leave those in the comment section below, I'll definitely get back in touch with you in regards to, uh, to creating additional videos or any questions you have, please leave those below as well. And uh, remember, there is the 20% the off discount code below for the first 100 folks that use it. And there's also the free trial link as well for your first 30 days. I would highly encourage you if you've never used Capture One before, try it out for 30 days. It's gonna cost you nothing and it is definitely worth just trying it out. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Thanks again, sponsor, or <laughs> thanks again, Capture One, for sponsoring the video. If you enjoyed it, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.